Okay, all my, uh, this was in Todd's younger days. Uh, it's a lot younger than Todd. No <laughs> longer beer. Uh, <coughs> strippers, we try and put everyone on the radio. And that's so that we can yell at you to get out of there if you need to get out. Now, the whole idea is for, sometimes we'll run two or four strippers in here to let these strippers keep an eye on each other. We try and have our most experienced ones on the inside so that, because that's the potentially the most dangerous if we get a wheelchair. There have uh, a radio to uh, keep in contact. Uh, Hillsides are really tough. <coughs> These are really tough because it takes narrow strips. There's a lot of fuel on these hills. The wind's carrying it up. We've got unburned grass over here. And so it takes a lot of effort to get these hills. This whole hill has to be burned off because when we set a head fire, it'll come pouring up hill at 35 miles an hour. And if this isn't burned off good, it will jump. So it just takes a lot of strips up and down, or in around and around, to get these hills done. And that's why they're really wipe the strippers out. <clears throat> so if you're stripping and you get tired, don't be macho about it. Just say, I'm tired. Give me another job. Because generally, there will probably be somebody on the hose who would like to get out there and strip. So we'll switch you off. But I don't want you doing the job if you're really, really tired. Because when you're really tired, then you start getting careless, sloppy, and it becomes a much more dangerous situation. So when you get tired stripping, you say, hey, you're tired, we'll put you on a, on a hose, uh, less stressful position. Stripping, this, this looks, this looks what it is, worse than what it actually is, is a lot of tall grass, and we'll set plank files so we run the strippers in there. Sometimes when we're running plank files, if we get a wind shift, it becomes a very dangerous situation, particularly in the tall, unburned grass. So the people that are uh, running stripping in these unburned areas, uh, I mean ungrazed areas, they can, uh, they always have to keep alert. And particularly when we're going around the corners and something all of a sudden, set a plank fire, and maybe set a head fire the next thing you know. So the, uh, that's why we have experienced people on the inside, just so they well, sometimes it used to be we'd put the expendable people on the inside. <laughs> and that way, I think I got burned out of that. Uh, snatch, and then we get to the grays, we get to the grays pastures, it's a, it's a whole different ball. We Everybody gets to run drip torches on the grays pastures, just about. Because it, it is so small of a fuel load. The whole idea here is to get a, enough of a black so that fire doesn't trickle through to get here in the unburned area. So it takes a lot of drip torches coming through here and going back and forth to make sure that we've got a black line. And then we still have to have people standing and watching to make sure that it doesn't trickle into the fire. When we burn the grazed areas, the bison are always curious, so you've got to keep your eye out. We have explosions in the, in the bison areas, and they'll always heavily go up the ground. So fire won't get to them. If you're a stripper, you see explosion in the watershed that we're burning. <laughs> <laughs> Only in the watershed. And you, you can light them suckers off. And then the, the best job, the cow pie kickers in the graze pastures, and because it takes a talent to know a good fresh cow pie that you don't want to kick. Because it, if you kick it, it sticks to your boots. But the dry ones, when the fire goes through, it turns them into these ashes and the wind pick them up and it can carry them over into the unburned area and becomes a potential fire hazard. So gray pastures sometimes go very slowly because we have to make sure there's a pretty good buffer of no smoldering cow pies. <clears throat> the tool that we use, and we'll call it a flapper, and it's more appropriately called a swatter. Uh, we don't flap. We'll, we'll show it to you when we get there, it, but you don't go flapping. All that does is spread the fire. And so, uh, flapper's the best tool you can have, and when we run short on people, 
of doing things like if you had been stripping them, I said, okay, I don't need you to strip anymore. Just grab a flat foot and follow up behind the truck. It's not a big deal. You're just following up. Just uh, keep the conversation and, and watch the thing. You've got a tool in your hand in case you need it. And if the pump ever quits, we run out of water or something, first thing you do, grab a flat foot. I guarantee you this flat foot's a lot better putting that fire and stomping on it with your boots. So uh, it's also a handy little resting item to set and watch the fire. Um, we do have jobs of uh, low key jobs of uh, watching the fire. Sometimes when we go like, like uh, these humongous areas over here that we can't ever see one unit from the other unit. So it's nice to have a rover driving back and forth just to, just to say, okay, did the fire jump? Because if it jumps, nobody's going to know about it until we get it all the way done. And it's happened for us, too. Uh, one time we burned, it, burned in this watershed, we kept over the R1B. We didn't know about it until you know, it was going back for water. Unfortunately, he's going back for water with an empty tank, so it didn't do any good, but the fire was better than it would be. Oh, I want to be. So, uh, we have a rover sometimes that's just driving back and forth, and that's their sole job. They have a radio, and they'll be able to just keep an eye on if fire jumps, because if it does, they'll be the one that knows it. And what happens quite often is just not jumping from not having a lot enough fire guard, because these little dust devils keep jumping. And they can carry flames into an area uh, or hot embers into an unburned area and start the fire. So when, when we got all these unburned watersheds, it, just, it becomes much more of a critical deal. Okay, so what do we do real quick when we do a burn? We start in the corner on the downwind side. So there we got the wind going this way, we start at this corner. One unit goes this way. One unit goes this way, the clockwise unit, you know, with your truck, the tractor's already up in the front. And it's a red tractor. It's a red truck, and it's a blue truck with the counterclockwise. Setting back files, this is setting off a bow, this is setting off a mobile file gun. The units head in different directions, <coughs> lighting back files into this a nice wide black area so that when we set the head file through the It'll be uh, wide enough the file will be contained. Then we finish around, coming around the corner up on the uh, on the upwind side, we set head files. So now it's sweeping through the units, hang back. No sense to have these units sitting there. This is hot on our get out. So these guys just honking right along. This burns. This is not going to be anything. As soon as this heat passes, the units come through. <coughs> knock this, um, knock that fire out. No sense getting them in the heat. So once we finished, once we finished the watershed, we backtrack, make sure everything's out, nothing's smoky. Check the trees. I mean, the whole idea is to get rid of the trees, but. If they're burning like this, they're burning all night. Throwing the sparks out. And if you've got an unburned watershed downwind, it becomes a dangerous situation. This is the greatest sight you want. <laughs> Fire does not kill trees. It does knock them back, but it doesn't kill them. When you put a pack rat nest in there, you burn that pack rat nest, I can guarantee you that tree's dead. So this is really great, but it will burn for hours. And they can put cow pies in there and everything else in the world. And it takes forever for that sucker to quit burning. So when we have pack rat nest near the edge of the uh, fire gun, we do not let them burn. And that just kills me. But we do not let them burn because it becomes more of a hassle to, <coughs> to uh, have them burn than just not let it burn and move on. We don't have to worry about it. Okay, once we finish the watershed, normally we'll get ready and go to the next watershed. The units come back and we bring out a nurse tank. 
they fill out the units and you win those things. And so uh, you, you, over, over, we're not going to stop this sucker up today, but over time you can see how we mine this always gives you a stop and bond the valve. And then somebody better be hanging on this hose. <laughs> If, I, if you don't see anybody hanging on the hose, you better get out of the way. Sometimes we don't have the nurse tank nail uh, and the truck unit runs out of water and we suck water off the truck unit and we just siphon it from the truck and then maybe some truck back to the Jet torches uh, will be refilled at the time. Jet torch fuel in blue. We have a red gas tank on the back of the trailer too. Do not put gasoline into the drip torch. Use, use the drip torch. When you fill these, don't fill them on the trailer because there's always spillover. And we don't need to have all this wood soaked with diesel fuel when they drive through fire. It just burns forever. So when we fill up the, the drip torches, do it on the ground. Try not to do it on somebody's plot. I had comes up with it. So. Okay. When you hear when you hear a long horn blast, means something's going wrong. Short short blast is just to get your attention. Long blast means something's wrong. No just response. Generally it means that the spy on the fire or the fire jump to the other side. Because it's the truck drivers that normally see that. So the other one would be doing that. The most important thing if fire jumps into a fire watershed next to us that we're not running is that I don't want people getting all gun ho and running out there, risking life and limb and equipment trying to put that fire out. We will do it in an organized, coordinated way. We're not going to take our vehicles and run them out in the middle of the watershed and risk losing them, getting them burned up. So we, we're still lighting a fire in the watershed that we initially did, so what we have to do is pull off a unit and work on the wild fire while we're still doing the controlled burn in uh, the other watershed. So it, it means all of a sudden that we have a, uh, a split up of, of powers of what we're doing and assignments, but we do not risk the equipment or people. It is just grass. It's not worth getting killed for or burning a truck up. So if it burns up somebody's research, well, it's a bad thing. We don't want it, but that will, we will sacrifice it if necessary. So the important thing is just don't get over emotional if you see fire jump. We will try and put it out. We'll do our best <coughs> to put it out. If we can't, we'll, we'll uh, send another unit but start back on that watershed to protect the other watersheds. But don't, don't get out there and start driving around and, and uh, taking the hose and running into uh, areas and getting in a dangerous situation.